Well, welcome everyone to the next in our series of YouTube videos on alternative driving methods for power wheelchairs. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite alternative driving methods and that's fiber optic switch arrays. These work really well for people with muscle weakness and are very powerful, sophisticated technology. So let's take a look. So what is a fiber optic switch? Well, a fiber optic switch emits an invisible beam of light, a fiber optic beam of light. And when that beam of light encounters something like a finger or a thumb, it's reflected back and that activates the switch. And it does so very quickly. This is an electronic switch. It's powered by the power wheelchair batteries or by a separate battery. And as such does not require any force, but only travel. The activation distance can be anywhere from touching the sensor to maybe 12 inches out, though it does work better at closer distances. The cables are rather fragile. They do need to be protected, and that's part of our mounting strategies. These are available from Adaptive Switch Labs, ASL, Stealth Products, and Switch It. So fiber optics can be used again as a single switch with a separate rechargeable battery or as part of a switch array, and that's more common. There is a feature available through ASL and Stealth that links two switches so that when the user covers two switches, it will move forward. If they cover only the left switch, the chair goes to the left, cover only the right switch, the chair goes to the right. If the driver can also activate a third fiber optic switch, this can be used as a reset, for example. Traditionally, we're going to use four switches, forward, left, right, and perhaps reverse or reset, depending on how it is programmed. If the driver is able to cover forward and left at the same time, for example, in a four switch array, they will get a diagonal movement similar to what happens with the head array. And this can be really helpful for course corrections. Let's watch this brief video to give you an idea of what fiber optic driving looks like. These are fiber optic switches. These switches require no force, but do require travel. They're very small switches and respond to extremely small movements and as such are often used with people who have uh, muscle weakness. Here we have a four switch fiber optic array. One switch is for left, one is for forward, one is for right, and one is for reverse. Tim is gonna go ahead and show us how these work. Go ahead and drive for just a second here, Tim. So utilizing very small movements, he is able to drive this chair. Now, typically the client with muscle weakness is not going to be able to hover over the switches in that way. So it's very important to provide adequate upper extremity and hand support for the client. The tray itself or a hand pad like the ones pictured here can also provide that support. So mounting the switches is very important. We don't just hand a fiber optic switch to somebody. And those cables, again, need to be protected. So this tray, uh, this particular one from Stealth, happens to be hollow, and all those cables can be housed inside. And then we can position the switches either on the surface of the tray, as pictured here, or even along the edge of the tray. Some clients have better control if their fingers are allowed to hang over the edge of a tray. It puts those flexor tendons on a more relaxed position and that can improve control. On the right here we have a little hand pad and you can see this has been placed right at the end of a nice wide arm pad to provide good upper extremity support. There's little fiber optic switches placed in these mini goosenecks that are hollow to allow for the precise placement needed by an individual. Here are two rather custom mounts uh, for clients that I've worked with in the past. On the right, we have Julian who has spinal muscular atrophy type one, and there's a little fiber optic placed by his thumb and it's placed right on the top of a hand pad attached to the end of his arm trough. On the left, we have Farid who has the same diagnosis, but he needs to pull his finger back towards the switch to activate it. And so we've sandwiched the switch cable in between two pieces of foam to create a custom arm trough. 
It's also possible to mount fiber optics through a hollow gooseneck, and this allows for placement by a finger, also perhaps by a cheek to allow for access. So just another mounting option. Finally, fiber optics can also be mounted for use in conjunction with a sip and puff driving method. Now, someone using a sip and puff has a straw placed right in front of their mouth, but if they hit a bump in the road, that straw might move just out of their reach. If the fiber optic switch no longer detects the presence of the lower lip or the chin, it will stop at the chair, and this is a safety measure. It's important to know how to adjust these switches for the activation distance, how close the client has to get to it to actually activate the switch. Now this can be tricky. I do this a lot, but it can still take a lot of time. We have a few shortcuts that are now available to us. So ASL has something called a teach mode that allows us to generally set the activation distance and then manually hand or uh, fine tune it afterwards. Stealth has a feature where I can simply ask the client to move that finger or thumb in the uh, distance that I feel is necessary for them to activate the switch, and then I simply need to push a little button that says tune, and the activation distance is automatically set. It can really be a useful feature. So remember, fiber optics can be a great alternative driving method for power wheelchair users who have muscle weakness. I hope this was helpful to you. Please check out our other videos in this series. Thanks so much.